This week's video is going to look at uh, limiting beliefs, limiting self-beliefs, so changing the narrative, reframing the questions, reframing the thoughts, changing the thoughts. Before we get into that, please hit that like and subscribe button. It really does help the channel. Leave any feedback in the comments section that you wish to, and I will endeavor to get back to you. So without further ado, let's look at limiting beliefs and how to change them. What does reframe the question mean? What does reframe the thought mean? What does uh, change the narrative mean? Well, often many of us uh, through our experiences have some kind of script that we play out. We have some kind of standard default reaction to certain situations. We've learned that reaction or we've developed that reaction because we learn from the past. We see patterns within past situations and they may repeat themselves. So, you know, it's that kind of past, past, represent past futures. Therefore, future pasts are going to represent future futures. That was a tongue twister, wasn't it? So we get into this kind of line of thinking and we can also get caught up big time in the story, the narrative of what's going on. So the first thing to do is to jump out of that, take a helicopter view, have a look at what is really going on. That's a very, very good first step. A second step is to pick and choose your own battles. And what do I mean by that? Well, sometimes you need to lose the battle to win the war. And if you want to win every battle, then I would suggest maybe looking at your ego and why you would want to win every battle, what you get from winning every battle and what you get from losing every battle. You will also find, people also find that they're limiting self-beliefs and they're limiting uh, their negative thoughts around certain situations holds them in, in stagnation, holds them, prevents them from moving forward, keeps them in a certain place. A very, very difficult question to ask yourself here is, what do I get from being stuck in this continuous, never-ending circle, never-ending cycle of the same thing? What do I get from this negativity? What do I get from this dysfunction? What do I get from my limiting self-beliefs? Often you'll find it's actually it's safety. I know how to be this way. I don't know how to be another way. I know how to, um, let's say for this, let's choose some limiting self beliefs, shall we? Let's have a look at those to give you some live examples. So a life example might be, I'm never going to get the job that I don't want. I'm never gonna get that promotion. I'm never gonna be able to start my own business because I don't know enough. I'm not experienced enough. I'm not skilled enough. I don't have the right attributes so therefore you don't you know bother or you do bother and you know you're going to fail so it becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy and you self-sabotaged it because you didn't do anything to prepare for it the limiting self-belief here is quite obvious how can you reframe that okay so i want this is a good start i want this i want to achieve this but i only have this so you work with your resources i only have this what do i need to do to get from here to there Right, well, I need to learn some new skills. Do I have the ability to do that? Yes, I do. Do I have the financial resources to do that? No, okay. Are there free resources on the internet? Yes, there are. Can I look at those first? Yes, I can. Can I save money? Yes, I can. You begin to reframe it and you look at what you have, what you can work with, rather than looking at the negative side of it, rather than this kind of self-sabotage of, oh, this will never happen to me. I will never get that. You can also, take it into like, I don't know, I want to learn a new sport or I want to get fit or I want to lose weight. If I go to the gym, everybody's gonna laugh at me because I'm fat. If I go running down the street, everybody's gonna laugh at me because I'm fat. Why wouldn't they laugh at me, I'm fat. Her fat person in the gym, stuff like that, which we can tell ourselves. Or if I go to join a club to do this sport that I like, um, well, I'm not good enough. I'm not good enough to go there. I'm not good enough to go there. You can completely reframe this. I'm here to learn. I've joined this club to learn. I'm gonna join this club to learn, to improve. I need to go to the gym for myself because I need to lose weight. So I don't care what somebody thinks. You know, analyze the situation. Who are these somebodies? Well, I don't know. Are they important to you? No, they're not. Why is it so important to you what they think? Well, I don't know because, because of how you feel about yourself. So change that limiting belief, change that um, I'm no good, I'm too this, I'm too that, I'm not enough this to, again, this is where I wanna to get to, I need to do this, here are my blocks, here's how I think about myself, 
is this realistic? Do I really need to think this way? And chances are the question, the answer is going to be no, you don't. The same with conflict with say like family members, loved ones, ex loved ones, things like that. Um, let's say a relationship, you know, they must be right. A relationship is broke up. It must be all me. They left me. I feel rejected. I'm never going to find anybody else. Look at me. I'm a middle aged man, woman. I've got children um, that I've got to look after. No one's going to find me attractive, etc, etc. And this can be a hugely limiting belief and block people. So I'm not going to go out, I'm not going to socialize. And actually, I'm just going to vegetate and I'm going to comfort eat. Um, might be something that you do and be un completely unsociable. And of course, the more you do that, the more you feed into your own rhetoric, the more you kind of fuel that limiting self belief. And again, work with what you have. What also often people with limiting beliefs will then at this point, <laughs> well, I don't have anything. I've got no characteristics, you know, and again, it's self-sabotage. Well, let's look at it. Can you have a conversation? Yes, I can have a conversation, but I don't know what about. Okay, what do you like? What are your passions? If you haven't got any, find something, explore. Don't limit, and, and I think sometimes the limiting beliefs come from, it isn't going to happen today, and I want it to happen today. Therefore, my limiting belief is correct. And this goes into another video I did about blocks to self-improvement. Persistence, consistency, have a drive, have a passion, keep trying, keep stumbling, keep making mistakes, keep moving forward, assess your situation. Well, you know, I have children and I'm single and my children have to live with me and I'm, a, you know, I'm a little bit, I don't know, overweight, a little bit dowdy, blah, blah, blah. Okay, whatever. But do you have good conversation? Are you a nice person? Can you cook? Can you entertain? Hey, you've got children. Some people are attracted to that. Some people are, you know, it's, it's this dispelling these myths that you have in your head. Now, those are kind of to do with the external, but there are some as well as the internal, but let's look at some other ones as well, which can be a little bit more intense. Okay, so here's one. I went for that job where I tried to study and I, I failed. You know, I, I wrote an essay and I got a referral, or I did the exam and I didn't get the marks I expected etc etc and at this point we can get extremely negative with ourselves we can go i'm useless this isn't for me i'm not in intelligent enough i'm not clever enough i'm not skilled enough sometimes it's really really worth looking at what you do know and what you are good at in these moments so again it's reframing the entire situation okay what happened well i had a panic attack in the examination room well i had uh, I got very, very anxious at the job interview. Okay, so do you know your stuff? Yes, I know my stuff. Okay, so you know your stuff, but the delivery of that, the pressure from delivering that in an interview or an exam caused you to, um, caused you to freeze, caused you to have a bit of a mental block. Yes, that's true. So your original thought of you're not good enough, you're not clever enough, you haven't learnt enough, is not correct. No, it's not correct. I mean, this is kind of, you know, Socratic, Socratically questioning yourself, which is a good technique to learn. You know, go underneath that. And you can, you can Socratically question yourself in, in many ways. And one of them is to define your meaning. So when you say, no good, what does that mean? When you say, rubbish, what does that mean? When you, when you say, oh, they're much more, um, I don't know, they're braver than I am, they're more this than I am, they're more outgoing than I am, they're more extroverted than I am, what does that mean? And question it and then question yourself. If you see other people as extroverted and friendly, what's going on for you? Maybe you're shy. Maybe you find that a little bit intense. Maybe you're introverted and then you become extroverted within the right social circle. So oh, this isn't the right social circle for me. I can't I can't connect with this, this isn't my thing. It doesn't mean you're useless, and it doesn't actually mean that everybody's looking at you, because chances are they're not. Most people are quite self-concerned. So you can undo and Socratically question a lot of your thoughts and your definitions, which we often skim across, and we go, this, 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 and this, and there's not much thought in it. And when you actually break it down, you start to realize, mm, actually, that's not quite the right definition, or that's actually not what's happening. That's one way. This is one I get in my room a lot. Everyone else seems to have their shit together, and I don't. And I'm a 
30 year old something, 20 year old something, 40 year old, 50, 60, 70. I've heard it come from all sorts of ages. Everybody else has got their shit together. Everybody else is having kids, family, stable partner, stable job. I'm broke, single, have no idea what I want to do um, in my life. Therefore, I've failed. I've completely failed in life. And again, it's looking at what you actually mean by that. What do I mean by this? Have I failed? What have I achieved? Well, you know what? I've got to a certain age and I've managed to move towns. I've had several different jobs. I've learned these skills. I'm able to pay my bills, or maybe you're not. Um, I have been able to pay my bills. I have been able to generate money. I have been able to have a social circle and I have been able to have a relationship. They didn't want me in the end. Oh, I'm so rejected and um, I must be useless. Can be actually, maybe I just wasn't for them. Maybe it just didn't work. Maybe it ran its course. And hey, if you found that kind of feeling once with someone, chances are you can find it again. And the same with the other stuff, you know, everybody else has got their stuff together. And comparison, comparing yourself to others is deadly. Absolutely deadly. It's a completely useless exercise it's completely pointless social media don't look at other people's social media as well and compare your life because other people social media is just full of smoke and mirrors and illusions and filters and people are not going to put their nonsense that people are going to put nonsense but people aren't going to put all the bad bits of their life up they're going to show you what's good Yes, sometimes people do do that in order to call for attention, which is something else. But then that's quite obvious. Oh, your life's going wrong. I can see it's going wrong. And then you, it, something I've learned in life is that nothing is ever what you imagine it to be. You know, when your ex goes off with someone else or leaves you for someone else or whatever, and you have this whole world in your head of what you imagine that they're doing and how happy they are and how they're communicating and all the rest of it. And it's always wrong. Um, the same as if you imagine it negative, it's always gonna be wrong because you're not there, you can't imagine it. And that all these feed into limiting self-beliefs. These, these, this is like persecuting yourself. Stop, just stop doing it. Just, it's a complete waste of your time. So you can, uh, I've forgotten where I was now. Everybody's got their life together, I haven't. Well, maybe you're, maybe there's some things you need to change in order to do, but define what your life, define what your life would be if it was together and then look at reasons why you haven't achieved it and s s acknowledge but try to not stay focused on this happened to me this happened to the me this happened to this this, this happened to me because you get into a negative spiral yes except that those things happened and held you back look at what it is you can change in you in order to move forward this is extremely important if you want to dispel a lot of this these negative thoughts these negative self-beliefs um and if you do have catch yourself with a negative thought, um, catch it in the air if you like, catch it in your mind as it comes forward. So um, that one where you might be speaking and there's that thought comes forward, you have no idea what you're talking about, you're so out of your depth. Catch it and push it away, first of all, if you're in that situation and then move around it. Actually, I do know what I'm doing, or I know what I'm doing to a certain level. Yes, there are people here I'm talking to who are more experienced, more um, more qualified than I am, or people here that I look up to, but you have something to say, you have something to give, and if it's wrong, if it's completely wrong, someone somewhere is going to go, hey, you know what, um, that's wrong, and, and here's the reason, and just ask, it is, why? How, how is it wrong? What have I done? And ask, because people love to show people. People lo actually like to help people, especially in those situations. So again, it's, it's, it's don't be embarrassed to make a mistake because you can learn from those mistakes and often someone will try and help you. Yes, there are certain situations where your boss is going to not be happy if you make costly mistakes. And then again, just maybe own up to it. Just say, hey, you know, I'm having some issues at home. Or, hey, actually, I feel a bit out of my depth here. I don't really know what I'm doing. Is there possibly some training I could have on this? Because, you know, you've given me this task and I, I, I really don't know what I'm doing. 
that is better than keeping keep making mistakes and bullying yourself with your own thoughts. Oh my God, I can't do this. I should be able to do this. He says I can do this. They say I should be able to do this. This is not done on time. You know, I'm useless. Why would they employ me? Oh my God, if, I, if this goes wrong, then I'm going to lose my house. I'm going to lose this. I'm going to lose that. You know, you can easily go down those spirals. So practice Socratically questioning. Have a look at your thoughts from underneath. Have a look at what you're doing to yourself and look at the bigger picture of if it's a scenario or a situation from going to the gym or jogging down the street because you want to lose weight to performing in some kind of exam or maybe a live performance or something like that or where you're giving a talk um, or where you're navigate, navigating whatever it is, something in your career, something within your family and you feel like you're the imposter and you don't know enough and all the rest of it, look at the wider scope of things. What happened in that situation? Do I need to think this way? Well, actually this, this and this affected how I did that. So actually I do know my stuff or I do know what I'm talking about or I do, uh, I do have some attributes which are, you know, if you, if, you want, if you want to go back out on the dating scene, I do have some things that are quite interesting. You know, some of these things, yes, there are certain people who are not going to want to engage with me in a relationship because I have children or, I, or whatever it is. But there are other people who are because, and why would you want someone who's not interested in um, you or is not interested in you because of this, because you don't drive a big enough car or, or you don't have a nice enough house or whatever, which we can very quickly, a lot of us can interject as there's something wrong with us. Well, no, it's, that's just that person's preference. And you could go into the judgmental thing and say, well, they're superficial, they're this, they're that, and materialistic, leave it, let it go. It's a battle you don't need to win. Look at yourself. Okay, so I wasn't for them because they're looking for this, but someone else out there is going to be looking for what I offer because I can see that other people in my position manage to get new partners. What we often do with these negative thoughts as a last little metaphor is we kind of take a cup to the ocean and we take the cup, we stick it in the ocean, you've probably heard this before, and we look at it and we go, oh, there's no fish in this cup. But before we get to, there's no fish in this cup, we go straight to, there's no fish in this ocean. It's that, that's what we do with ourselves. And it's like, you've only taken a sample. You've only taken one event, or maybe two events, or maybe three events. Think of how many cupfuls of ocean you'd need before you got a fish in it. You've taken a, several events or a chain of events and allowed that to make a judgment or you've allowed that to influence your judgment on yourself or the judgment of potential future fulfillment, happiness, success. It's very easy to do it's more difficult to undo, but it starts with that Socratic questioning. So I hope that helps. Um, as always, please like and subscribe. Hit that subscribe button because it helps keep the channel going. And I will see you very soon. And in the meantime, please take very good care of yourselves. Adios.